Hey guys, how's it going? This is Jay once again. Welcome back to my channel. And this time around, I have for you a review of the KDE Neon User Edition distribution, which is a great distro for those of you out there that want to try out the latest version of the Plasma Desktop. So what exactly is KDE Neon? If you haven't used this before, you may not be aware of it. So real quick, it's a distribution that's based on Ubuntu. And even though it uses that as its base, what it actually gives you is the Plasma desktop environment. Now to be fair, you also get Plasma in Kubuntu as well, which is an official KDE spin of Ubuntu. But with the Neon distribution, you always have the latest version of KDE, which is not always the case, but you're not necessarily on the bleeding edge of your distribution, which, which gives you basically a nice mix of stability, but with new features. And as you can see here on my laptop, if you've used Plasma before, they don't really change anything. One change you'll probably notice is that the web browser is Firefox. Now, Firefox is not actually a Plasma application. It's actually built on the GTK toolkit, whereas Plasma is built on Qt, which is spelled Qt. Firefox is added because there really isn't a comparable web browser that is built with the Plasma technology. So they basically give you Firefox as the default web browser. But KDE in and of itself does not imply Firefox as the default web browser. That's just a decision made by the curators of the Neon distribution. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up. You can see how fast that opened up, just it goes to show you how fast and responsive this distribution and this desktop environment is. And if you've used Firefox before, there's really not much to say here. The only thing that's different about the KDE Neon distribution in regards to Firefox is that there is the ability to integrate KDE Plasma with Firefox via a special extension. So I'm going to go ahead and open the add-ons right now. And I'll go to extensions. And it's not actually installed right now. Normally what will happen is an icon will appear down here that'll give you the option to go ahead and install that. Now I accidentally um, canceled out that icon, so I can't show you right now. But it's easy to find the add-on if you go ahead and search for it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for Plasma integration, press enter, and you can see that the first result is plasma integration. I'm going to go ahead and click on that and add to Firefox. Click add and I'll show you basically what that does. I'm just going to download a really large file. So I'm just going to Google CentOS ISO just so I could show you basically how it integrates or at least one of the ways in which it integrates. So I'll click on it right here. I'm just going to download an ISO because it is a large file. I'm just going to click on a random link right here. I'll click Save. And you can see down here it's actually showing a running job and it's basically showing me the download for Firefox here integrated in the Plasma desktop. So I don't actually have to bring up Firefox to see the process of the downloads and how far along they are. I get an overview of that here. There's other integrations as well. For example, there is media player uh, availability here as well. So if you're watching video or something like that, it will show here as well. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and try that. Why not? I'm going to go ahead and go to YouTube. Make sure the volume is muted. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to watch one of my videos. So basically what I'm doing right here is I'm watching a video on my own channel here so I don't get a copyright takedown notice or anything like that. But basically you can see that I have a little media player right here that allows me to change the uh, position of the video, for example, and pause, skip, or whatever I want to do by simply interacting with Plasma. And this is useful if you're listening to music and you don't want to bring up your web browser to find out, you know, how to pause it or which tab has your media playing or something like that. So it just goes to show you the attention to detail the Plasma developers have included here. And you can see I even got a notification here that my download is finished. 
And again, none of this that I mentioned as far as this, this integration is actually specific to KDE Neon. The KDE Neon distribution just simply gives you the latest desktop environment of Plasma. So the features that you're seeing, you'll also see as a possibility in other distributions as well. So the whole point here is that we get the latest version of the Plasma desktop. I'm gonna go ahead and close all this. I'm gonna go ahead and bring up the K Info Center. And it's telling me that I'm using Plasma 5.15.1. And, you know, that's actually not the latest version. 5.15.2 is actually the latest version as of the time I'm recording this. And that's just because the installation media I used, I forgot to update that. But when you download it, you actually will get the latest version. But even if you don't, when you run your updates, you will get the latest version of Plasma every time one is released. So to show you that, uh, just notice this icon here at the bottom. It's actually the update manager. This is the Discover application. It's showing an icon down here to let me know that there are updates available. So I'll click View Updates. And I'm not going to go ahead and do it right now, but basically what this will show is a listing of all the updates available for my system. And you can see that there's quite a few. Again, because my installation media was outdated, I forgot to update that. But I'm actually glad I forgot to do so because it does, in fact, show you how the update process works. And it's great that they built this into KDE Neon. So even though this is effectively just a distribution for having the latest version of Plasma, for all intents and purposes, it's an operating system and gives you all the functionality that you would get with any other distribution, such as downloading and installing updates. Applications, for example, if I wanted to install new software, I can do that. And it's not limited to just KDE software. Look at here, this is Tilex, a great terminal emulator for GNOME. Even though that's for GNOME, we can install it. So I'll click Install and I'll put in my password. And we can see it's downloading, now it's installing. And I'll go ahead and see if it's in the menu. It is. Configuration issue detected, that's just something with Tilex. I'm not gonna get into that. But basically, you can see here I have a GNOME app running. And you know, it looks right at home here in Plasma. And that just goes to show you the Plasma developers, they don't discriminate. They went ahead and made other software even outside of Plasma applications available for you to download. GIMP, there's a whole bunch of things. Go ahead and close the applications here. We'll get back to the video in just a moment, guys. But before we do, I just wanted to quickly mention my sponsor, Linode. Linode is an awesome provider of cloud Linux servers and their Cloud Manager dashboard makes it extremely easy to set up your own Linux server in seconds. Whether you like Fedora, Debian, Ubuntu, or whatever your distribution of choice is, you can have your very own Linux server running your favorite distribution in a geographic location near you with the latest one just recently introduced in Toronto. So go ahead and check out the link in the description below this video where you can get $20 in credit towards your own Linux server. So go ahead and check that out and let's get right back to the video. And one of the great things about KDE is the amount of customization that you get. So for example, workspace theme, there's two, so yeah, not much customization, right? I mean, I can enable the dark theme, which I always do because I do enjoy it, but don't let that fool you because there's a bunch of themes available here. So if I click this get new look and feel themes, you know, I just scroll through this list and if I find something that I like, I can go ahead and install it and then get additional themes. There's a separate theme for applications and Plasma as well. So the Plasma theme itself can be um, updated or changed independently of the rest of the system. You can even download cursor themes. You can change the splash screen you see when you first you know, log into the environment. There's all kinds of options here. And that's one of the reasons why the Plasma desktop is basically so loved by so many people in the Linux community because of the amount of options you have to customize your environment. And, you know, other desktop environments give you a lot of options as well, but I have to say from what I've seen, I think Plasma might just have the most customization of any that are available, which is, you know, just one of the many reasons why it's so popular. And it's a shame 
that it's not the default desktop environment in most distributions, despite its popularity, most distributions seem to go toward GNOME for their default. Not that it's a bad thing, because GNOME is actually my favorite desktop environment, but I would like to see Plasma get more love as well. Go ahead and close this here. So I'm back here at a clean desktop, and I'll show you a couple more applications here that's included in this release. So under Office, what do we have here? We have just the Document Viewer, but we can easily install LibreOffice if we would like to utilize that. For Internet, I've already gone over Firefox. We have a section for Graphics. Again, we have the um, Document Viewer again. We also have a Default Image Viewer as well. And for Multimedia, we have VLC for playing media files. But you can see that we don't actually have a ton of applications here. You know, Tilex I installed myself, but we have KSysGuard, which allows you to basically check out how loaded your system is or your resource utilization. That's useful. So we have utilities like that all over the place that we can use to basically configure our system or even a terminal with console if we're a developer or system administrator. And uh, we like that kind of thing. But other than that, it's a very clean desktop. There aren't a lot of applications here available by default. And there isn't a lot of changes here because they wanted to give you the KDE Plasma experience as the developers intended without any additional changes. So overall, I would love to go over all of the various features of KDE Neon and things like that, but there really aren't any because the whole point isn't to give you additional functionality or anything like that. The goal of KDE Neon is to present to you the latest version of the Plasma desktop environment. And any new features you do get are actually from Plasma and not from KDE Neon. Now, of course, there's some differences. For example, the inclusion of Firefox that I mentioned earlier. So there's going to be some changes here and there, but overall, the goal of KDE Neon is to give you the opportunity to have the latest version of Plasma on a stable base, which in this case is Ubuntu 18.04, which again has been stable for me. And I really do like this distribution. I'm not really sure how stable it is long term because I haven't had enough time to really immerse myself in it just yet. So I can't speak to its stability. I can say that the distribution has been stable the entire time I've been using it. The installation process was extremely fast. I have a video of going over that process on my channel already, so feel free to check that out. And it's resource friendly, it's responsive, just overall a pleasure to use so far. So if you're looking for a distribution to give you a stable base, maybe you don't want a rolling distribution, you want a stable base, but you also want the latest version of Plasma well, here you go. KDE Neon is a great place to get that. So I highly recommend you guys check it out. And let me know in the comments what you think, if you have a chance to check it out. What are your opinions? And how is it running on your system? Go ahead and let me know. And I will see you in the next video, which I should have uploaded very soon. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you want to help me out, go ahead and check out the links in the description below. And there you'll find a link to purchase my latest book, Mastering Ubuntu Server, 2nd Edition. You'll also find a link to my Patreon page, as well as my Amazon store, which includes a listing of Linux-compatible hardware that I've tested personally. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.